Hey guys, it's Lion here with Hobbies Man once again, and today we're going to be doing another uh, movie review or film review. We're going to be looking at Kamen Rider, uh, or actually Shin Kamen Rider, the newest uh, Tokusatsu Universe movie that uh, Hideki Anno has worked on. Uh, I don't know who else was involved, I didn't really pay attention to that aspect of it. Uh, mostly, I had unexpectedly heard that the movie was coming to the US. It was kind of like a very quick thing. Uh, it only happens today, and I think sometime june 5th um today being march 31st and right now it's 10 p.m uh i want to watch the movie from 7 to 9 uh from 7 to yeah 9 9 15 ish um and uh, it seemed to be the last showing for the movie for the day so it's very unlikely you guys will have a chance to watch it uh anytime soon but if you do um and you manage to go to the uh, june 5th showing I recommend you guys do because it's, it's pretty enjoyable. It's a good movie. So, um, yeah, we're going to talk about it. We're going to kind of discuss some of the stuff that I, that I felt like uh, talking about. And um, hopefully I can get this out before the end of the day. Uh, so within the next two hours. Um, if not, it, it's not a big deal. I just kind of want it to be kind of the last video for the 31st, right? So, um, yeah. Shin Kamen Rider by Hideki Anno and a bunch of other people. Uh, featuring a modern retelling. Um of the Common Rider story. So uh, just two days ago, I actually read the Common Rider 50th anniversary manga, the, uh, the Seven Seas one. And I'm very happy I did because my roommate has not read uh, that manga and doesn't really know too much about Common Rider besides the, the bits we've learned from watching Common Rider uh, Black Sun. And I, we kind of talked about this after the movie. It seems like he was more or less lost and it seems like even though the movie is a pretty good introduction to Kamen Rider, you would enjoy it more if you're already a fan or you know some of the basic premise of the Kamen Rider story. So um, Kamen Rider in general is about this organization called Shocker, who are kind of an evil hidden organization, some sort of cabal of uh, Japanese uh, wrongdoers who have this kind of... Uh, very high level desire that they wanna achieve uh, in order to do it for world peace, but realistically is for control, right? And this organization creates these human animal hybrids um, that, you know, you can call Kaijin or something like that. In this new movie, they call them AUGs, A-U-G's, uh, as in augmented, uh, something like that. And all of them kind of have to be bug related or at least all of them in this movie are bug related and uh, one of the ones that they create is this uh, grasshopper or locust um, hybrid who they call um, Batu Og I think is what what it says in the in, in the back of his neck um, but he is basically uh, you know locust man or grasshopper man um, and through a weird convoluted series of events he doesn't fall under the brainwashing that Shocker puts its agents through. And so he has free will. He meets this guy who is connected to Shocker but wants to get out of it. This guy dies and he leaves uh, our main character, um, Hongo, with a mission. Protect my daughter, Riroko, um, and also kind of just end Shocker, right? And uh, so he becomes the masked writer, common writer, um, and fights uh, fire with fire, essentially. He is a grasshopper man, and all of the villains are other types of bug men. Um, the first one that he fights in both the, the comic and the movie is Spider-Man, uh, or Man-Spider, actually, I think it's what they call him. Um, and in this movie, all of them have the same type of look to them. In the original show, I think that Common Rider looked like a superhero, like a Power Ranger, and then everyone else just looked like monster suits, right? However, in this one, they do the conscious effort of making all of them look like Power Rangers, um, you know, or technically they're all common writers, but um, they all have this kind of uh, similar, if not exactly identical kind of look to them. So um, if common writer kind of looks like this somewhat metallic, somewhat organic looking thing, the other guys all look like that too. Um, and they all had pretty cool designs. The only one I didn't like was the chameleon one. Um, and I also didn't like the scorpion lady, but I'll, I'll explain why in a moment. So, 
he starts fighting these guys. And in this movie, Ririko actually happens to be a meaningful character instead of just a generic love interest female character that shows up in a lot of early classic manga um, because they felt like they needed to add that in, right? Or because there was a point to them, but they never kind of realized that point. Um, and so in this one, Ririko is basically a agent of shocker, but one that also managed to avoid the brainwashing and wants to get rid of them. And so she happens to be this kind of like badass femme fatale type character, almost like a Black Widow type character, but without getting into the heavy action, she is more of a hacker slash like gun toting kind of person. Um, and she and Kamen Rider join forces. And then they join forces with these other guys, Tachibana and Taki, who are kind of basically Japanese equivalent of a CIA agent uh, or an FBI agent. They're kind of like a secret organization of the government uh, that work for the JSDF, um, but are specifically the anti-shocker defense force, basically, or the anti-shocker organization. And so these four people are Team Common Rider, and they have to fight against Man Spider, Man Bat, um, Scorpion Woman, Wasp Woman, uh, Butterfly Man, and Chameleon Mantis Man. Um, and they all have different kind of situations that lead to them uh, doing this. They also fought someone else, but I can't remember. I feel like there were six bad guys. Um, and I, I can't remember what this, the other one was. But um, basically the movie speeds run you through three or four characters, then kind of fleshes out some of the other characters. So the one that fl is, is fleshed out the most, I would say, is the Butterfly Man, the big bad of the movie. Um, and... He is kind of the dark version of Kamen Rider for the sake of the story, right? Even every superhero has to have a bad guy that is exactly like them um, in terms of powers, even if their mentality is different. And in this case, it's Butterfly Aug versus Locust Aug, uh, or you know, Butterfly Man versus Kamen Rider. And I think that generally that aspect of the movie worked pretty well. Um, the wasp lady was also pretty interesting. I quite liked her. I thought that her relationship was interesting because more or less she is the villain for Ruriko. And so it's very nice to have this dichotomy of characters um, happen and interact and, and kind of uh, do that. And uh, then the man bath was kind of a generic character. Uh, it was actually kind of funny because I'm pretty sure that his character, even though in the original was more of a, you know, kind of a generic bad guy, um, honestly, I think that the original two, Man Spider and, and Batman, or Man Bat, were just inspired by Batman and Spider Man from like Western comic books. Um, I think in this one, they kind of went with the kind of epidemic, kind of bioweapon aspect for the Man Bat. And I thought it was interesting because of, you know, the big bad disease C19 that we kind of had to deal with over the last couple of years. Uh, so. I'm not saying they were digging at China with that, but it kind of felt like that. So I thought it was kind of funny in concept, um, although the kind of execution was more of like a hypno hypno hypnotism type of uh, power. So um, that was fine. And then there is another antagonist, uh, which is a second common writer, a second locust man. And then we have 12 more because in the original story, uh, or at least in the manga, there is the last segment of Hongo's story is the battle of the 13 common Riders. And uh, there's 13 bad ones and the main common Rider. And then the main common Rider manages to break one of the other uh, ones from uh, hypnosis or from brainwashing. And then this guy, Hayato, joins forces with uh, Hongo and they become the common Rider duo um, as they kind of deal with the rest of them. And more or less, we got the all of... Uh, Hongo's story in this movie. And so I think that if any of the uh, Shin movies are gonna have a part two, I think that it's going to be this one because there's still more to Kamen Rider in the original mythos of the story, right? There's the whole uh, aspect of Hayato Ichimonji and his story uh, that kind of, I feel like is set up because there is a third nebulous group of, of uh, characters, which are R, uh, I and K who are um, this kind of like mechanical AI kind of group, uh, pair actually. And I think that that is definitely the case for Kamen Rider having a second movie, uh, Shin Kamen Rider 2. And I hope that it does happen because 
I think that if you get both of those movies, you're going to have a good time and you're going to be able to introduce all of the Western uh, world and maybe all of the world in general to a common writer in a very good way because this movie was interesting it was enjoyable the story was good uh the characters were kind of weak but also um that's just kind of how the original common writer was too so it's really not that big of a deal for me as a fan um uh, very new fan but a fan nonetheless but i do think that it suffers a little bit in the sense that um if you nothing if you know nothing about common writer you'll get enough to understand but you won't really have an appreciation for what's happening and so um i think that it does have a weakness in that sense. It's not going to be a great introduction to Common Rider, but I honestly feel like most things are not great introduction introductions to Common Rider, um, and you kind of just have to go along with it and kind of hope that eventually it clicks and then you become a fan. And I think that's fine. Uh, generally speaking, the movie was enjoyable. I thought it was fun. It was interesting. Um, the action and the style of the movie was really really cool because, like, obviously it's never going to. Uh, compared to a Western superhero movie. Like, it's never going to look like Marvel or DC movies at all. It's just not what they're going for. And honestly, I don't think that it's really possible for Japan just because of the sheer amount of money that a Western Hollywood production can throw at a problem compared to a Japanese one, right? So uh, it's never going to look like that. So what they do instead is make it really artistic and interesting looking. And so... A lot of the fight scenes look really awesome and crisp, even if they do look like, you know, early 2000s CGI, because they make them stylistic. They make them feel like stop motion or like they're action figures having a fight in like your playground or something. And I really loved how they looked. Um, the best one was probably when Kamen Rider fights the Wasp Lady. That fight was really, really cool. It was this kind of like, it almost felt like the CW Flash, um, but kind of like with a different style to it that I really, really enjoyed. I thought it would look really, really cool. Um, the battle with the 12 common Riders or the 13 common Riders, whatever the, the, the actual thing is called, um, was not as good because the vast majority of it happened in darkness. And so it was really hard to see all of the characters that were fighting. But even then, I feel like there was pretty interesting animation and pretty interesting kind of choreography to that fight, even if it was hard to tell what was going on. But honestly, it was probably hard to tell what was going on because they deliberately lowered the uh, kind of visibility in order to hide some of the CGI issues so they would look better instead of like, and have people complain about the darkness instead of having people complain about the CGI. So I, I think that worked. Also, the big final battle basically ends up in kind of very on fashion with this kind of like just uh, dropping of all of the charades and just focusing in on the emotional aspect. Um, and I, I really enjoyed it. It was this really flashy, very interesting fight that slowly dev devolves, basically stops kind of like focusing on the flashy stuff and just zeroes in on two dudes just panting and trying to beat the other one. And they just like really can't, they're kind of tired. They're done emotionally and they're they're honestly realizing that what they're doing doesn't matter that ultimately one of them is never going to be able to succeed and it, it just has to be which one is weaker and uh, which one is stronger uh, of willpower and stuff like that and overall i really enjoyed the ending of the movie and i like how it ties in hayato and it leads into hayato's story later on he ends up on a bike across some ocean which is more or less how the first adventure with uh Hayato starts in uh, the Kamen Rider manga. So overall, I thought the movie was great. I really enjoyed it. I would give it an 8 out of 10, mostly because of the experience I had at the theater, because the theater I went to was sadly a uh, studio movie grill, which is a movie slash restaurant where they bring you restaurant style food to your table, uh, to your seat, actually. And that means that over the course of the movie, there's a bunch of people crossing in front of you. And it's actually not the the best way of enjoying the movie. And so that's an 8 out of 10. If I had to watch this at my usual movie theater at a Cinemark um, that sadly didn't have the movie playing at all, um, I think I would have enjoyed this like completely and it would have been a 10 out of 10. Um, in fact, it was so good that I, I, I kept myself from going to the restroom and actually felt like in pain while watching the movie uh, because I was really invested in what was happening. And so I um, decided to not go to the restroom even though I really had to go. Uh, so I could watch the whole movie and tell you about my experience 
and really enjoy it fully. So yeah, definitely gonna watch this again when I can. Um, I'm not gonna go to the next showing because I think it's better for other people to be able to enjoy the movie and me taking up a seat doesn't feel fair. Um, but as soon as it gets on streaming, whether that's Amazon or Crunchyroll, I'm gonna try my best to watch it again because I really did enjoy it. And uh, if I can get it on DVD or Blu-ray, I'll probably end up getting it uh, that way too because I really enjoyed this movie. I really enjoyed Shin Godzilla and hopefully I'll enjoy Shin Ultraman when I watch that if I ever get the chance. So um, yeah, it was this review was all over the place. I don't think it really was a review. It was more like a me uh, ranting about my experience with the movie and then kind of just talking about it. Kind of a ramble, I guess. Um, and I hope you guys enjoyed the ramble. I hope you guys watched the movie. If you did, let me know what you thought about it down below. And if you didn't, let me know if you want to watch it. And uh, if you're going to be able to go to the June 5th showing if uh, it's near your area. So there you go. Thank you guys very much for watching and see you guys later.